All right, everybody, the day is finally here. We're gonna get this truck on the ground. Dana 60 is gonna be complete. And we're gonna roll this thing out into the driveway and finish it off out there. So stay tuned for this episode. See this thing finally on its four legs again. All right, guys, so kick ass. Dana 60 is in the truck, got it all bolted in. Everything is bolted up on the axle itself. So now this thing is hanging there just the way it needs to be. Um, the next thing we gotta do is get these backing plates on for the drums and then get those assemble slide the actual axles down the axle tube and then we can put the wheels in this thing and get it on the ground finally so let's go get our hardware prepared for that in order to prepare to do that i want to clean up the hardware that they mount to and these are a little bit rusty just from having been on the old setup so we'll hit these really quick with the wire wheel and then get those nice cleaned up put them back on and you can see that both of the backing plates for the drums are done now nicely assembled everything's looking brand new Everything's action the way it should be. Parking brake cable will come in, it'll hold here and it'll grab. And then when it does this, you'll notice the shoes press out and that's what engages your parking brake. Um, they look really pretty. Honestly, the most handsome drums I've ever done. So what do you know? Those will go on the truck here in just a few. We've got all the hardware cleaned up. I'll shoot a little black paint on this back side because it'll be sticking out the back side of the, uh, the axle housing and get these mounted. So this is all we should need to finish up the job. Looks kind of like a lot, but basically we've got the backing plates here for the drums. Those will get bolted on to the end of the axle housing with the studs. We got to put our bearings inside of the drums and then pack them a little bit just beforehand a little extra safety this way because the full floating axle is still going to send all the axle grease down the way but we still want to make sure it's lubricated um we're going to get our e-brake cables put into the drum backing plates just before we do that and then all the extra hardware and that's pretty much it get this thing buttoned up get the axles down there and we'll be good And these we can kind of just loosely put in here. You'll notice it's got a little notch on it, which kind of matches against the back side of the flange, like that. And once we tighten down the bolts, they'll draw this thing nice and snug in there anyway. So we'll be good to go. Voila. We'll get this masking tape off now. I had just done this to keep it from getting protected from any moisture, or bugs and stuff getting down there. Now. Uh, we can slide all our new stuff right onto it. So a little frustrating hiccup, these e-brake cables that I ordered are short. Um, you can see when they're seated in there, as the wire, or the, as the cable pushes through down to here, it should be running this end into this arm and it's about an inch and a half short. So I'm gonna go see if I can get another set or maybe modify these to work because they're not long enough. And if I can't get these done now, that means if I ever will go to replace them in the future, I'd have to pull out the axles and the drums and everything, and I don't want to do that. So today got a little bit thrown off with having to get those custom e-brake cables made, but luckily Roger knows everyone in town, so we were able to go find a guy, and uh, our new buddy put together a couple of really nice e-brake cables. We took the one that was originally there. Um, I pretty much determined that we needed to get about four and a half inches of more length on them this way it fit a little bit more room inside the backing plate and also we had more play on the outside where it mounts up onto the body of the truck which you'll see later and then the other one we need to double its length because they both mount up on the driver's side of the chassis then the one goes to the driver's side drum and then the other one's got to go across the frame over to the passenger side and go into that drum so we kind of needed to be a lot longer so uh 70 bucks later some custom fabbed up e-brake cables and he even put the little um, retainer guys on there which allows these to go on here and then not ever slip out because otherwise you put this in here it could fall out either way so again you can see how we double the length on this one cable so now it should reach across from over here on the driver's side they both mount right here into these two holes and this lever pulls on them like this and so they're both going to connect into here and be mounted on this hole and then the one's going to go here to this drum and the other one's going to go all the way across the other side so that's why we made the long one right Odie? Real quick initial look. Again, this is gonna mount in right here and you can see this cable I've kind of just got going along the four by four across the other side over to where it'll mount over on the other drum. So looks like we did good on that one. Then as far as this one goes, let's try it out. So this is gonna pass through in here like this and then 
it goes under here into this guide and then over this way. So it looks like we've got the right length and uh, then our cable can come up and meet over here onto this bracket. So I think we're good. What are you guys doing? You guys having fun? What do you think, Odie? Looking pretty good, huh? Elliot, what do you think, buddy? Heck yeah. Okay. Get this guy worked in here like that. And then this goes right into this slot kind of like this. And now this little guy retains it. So this way it won't pop out and we don't lose our braking power. So now we can install this onto the truck. And then you can see as you pull on the cable, it's going to make the brake function like that. Just shot a little brake cleaner on some gray scotch bright, and then we're just gonna kind of make sure there's no gunk or anything left on the end shaft here. So this way there's nothing for that bearing and race to get gunked up with, and uh, we'll get our backing plate installed. Now as we install these, we make sure that this side here for the e-brake cable is forward. So this way it's routed that way. on there like that. You got four nuts that'll secure this down and uh, we can route our e-brake cable into it as well. Cool. Looks good. All right, I sprayed a little paint on those nuts because I realized I want to paint them first instead of having to spray them while it's on here and get overspray on all my springs and stuff. So we'll go ahead and start checking the back side of our drums and uh, get our bearings put in here in the meantime. And then there's a seal that goes in the back side of this as well. And as you guys see, I'm uncovering this tape because I masked this off before I painted and everything. And we got no overspray in here. Everything looks really good. All four of the bearings that we're going to be putting in here for front and back and both sides are the LM104, 949, some national bearings. And then the back seal that's going to go behind is a 4250. So let's go ahead and hopefully this is the right one. I haven't mocked it up yet. Hey, it sure looks like it. So we'll get a, a brass punch and a hammer and we'll kind of knock this thing right into its place. Not before we get the bearing. And then we're going to go ahead and really quickly pack this bearing some bearing grease first because even though like I said before the axle tube is going to send lubrication down its way it'll be dry for a little bit at first so we'll get this thing packed and here it is shiny and new and that'll fit right in there on that race just like that pretty cool let's pack it real quick okay here's our wheel bearing grease and uh get bearing number one here and the way we're gonna do this is just kind of scoop in there get us a bunch of grease and then just allow that grease to get smushed in by your hand and then pushed out and you should start seeing it come out this side of all those needle bearings on the inside Yep, and now you can see it starting to smush through right down in there. And that's kind of what we're just going to keep repeating all the way around, making sure we get a good bearing pack the whole way around. Okay, nicely packed. Go ahead and set this here. Just like that. Put the seal on the back side of the drum. I wanted to show you guys, you slip it over this shaft here, how it actually just fits nice and snugly right over this end. And this is where it's gonna rest and ride as you know it's actually spinning around and moving. And obviously I put a little bit of grease on this shaft too. Okay, let's tap this in. Now, as we're hitting this, we wanna make sure we're hitting just this red metal outside edge and we're not actually hitting any of this inner rubber nothing like that to damage it and we're just going to go nice and gentle 
and get this thing set into place. I'm gonna rest my hand on one side to act as leverage, so this way when you're hitting here, it's not making it fall from up. So kind of like that. And I'm just gonna lightly start tapping her in. a little bit of a game of back and forth you can hear that nice metal metal on metal as we can see it's totally seated now and you can also just visually see as you look down on the bottom that there is no gap we are totally flush and that seal is completely in there go ahead and do that here on the other side axle grease up here on this surface too because this is where that um, axle seal is actually going to ride right there as you saw as I mocked it up before and we're just going to put a little bit of thread locker here on these studs as well because we don't have any plans of this thing coming apart anytime soon all right we got the nuts painted and then we'll go ahead and get this backing plate tightened on here All right, now it's time to get our drums on there. I've uncovered my tape, so this way uh, we're not worried about stuff getting down there right now. Once we slide these on here, we'll see how much we need to loosen or tighten up on our drums, our drum shoes. Okay, we're on there. And it feels like we've got a decent amount of resistance already on our shoes matching up to the inside of the drum uh, mating surface so i don't think we're gonna have to bring them out too much but we can always get back behind there with a the screwdriver and adjust out the shoes this way we've got just enough of initial resistance on here but i think we're pretty good so uh, we'll get the rest of this masking tape here off this front face and we'll get our front bearing put in here and then we can get our axles slid down there all right and let's get this driver's side one on two Okay, you can hear on this side, barely making contact with the shoes. No resistance, so I'm gonna actually go ahead and adjust the shoes out. Just the hair. Get us a, a little bit more contact. See what that does for us. Hear that? That nice slight grind of the drums resting against the shoes. That's what we want to hear. Perfect. Right, now that these are sitting on here, you can see straight down here. This is the inside of the axle housing, and that's where it'll be pushing out gear oil, which will come out here and then go down and lubricate into the bearings. But that's why we pre-greased everything. So this way it's already ready to go. Now we'll slip the outer bearings over and then we get a lock nut that goes on here, and then we slide the actual axle shaft down into here and get a little RTV silicone on this face, bolt it up, and it's good to go. All right, now we'll get this front bearing in. Just slides right here, and then you can see it centers the drum, and you saw how it kind of centered out, and there it is. Nice and snug, fit right in there. Now there's a big nut we'll put on here, a little lock tab, and we'll get our axles in. Okay, and here's the rest of our hardware. Big lock nuts, and our little clip guide.
and you're gonna need one of these special rounded edged um, two by nine sixteen six R sockets to get this thing on here. Uh, it's gotta have this rounded edge because it matches the same shape and face of this nut. So get you one of these if you don't have one. We'll get our socket on there. And again, we're only gonna tighten this thing just enough to put a slight amount of preload against these bearings. You don't wanna tighten this thing down so much that you're actually gonna be squeezing all the bearings together and then the bearing, all those little roller bearings inside their individual race are gonna be all bunched up and it's gonna create a whole bunch of extra friction. So right there, you could just barely see, you'll watch the roller bearings inside, right in there, start rotating with it, right? Can you see that? Okay, so that's right about where you know we're hitting that first, right where you get what we call a lash. Lash meaning the first point of resistance we just feel where it just naturally stops us. So we're gonna stop there and I'm gonna get my big old socket, fit this guy on here, and I'm just gonna tighten down just about a half turn. And now I'm feeling just about to where it doesn't wanna let me rotate the socket anymore. The ratchet doesn't wanna move. So right there, I'm gonna call that home. We don't want these so tight that you can't even rotate. Okay, now you can see I can no longer get it loosened by hand, but we just put about a quarter turn on there. I'm gonna call that home. We're gonna put this locking tang right in here. Oh man, we got our puppy boys here too. Elliot, getting so big now, and Odie. Oh wow, oh man, getting attacked by doggies. Oh yeah, good boys. What do you think, Odie? Looks good, huh? Yeah. We'll knock our little lock tabs into place biting into the plastic of the lock nut, and then it's also just kind of holding right up against the body of the nut. All right, next step is to put the axles down, the axle housing, but I forgot that there's not enough space between the truck and I'd have to move forward the screw B, and there's definitely not enough space here to get the axle down. So I've got to move the GTX up too. And it's late and I don't feel like doing that. Let's so push this car out of the way. Come on. We gotta finish the job. Come on. GTX is out of the way too. I've got the room that we need over here on this side. We've got the axles ready to go back in the truck. I have smeared a little bit of Permatex on the back side of each one of these flanges. So this way, once they're in there, there's no leaks. So uh, without further ado, let's get these in. Ready, babes? Mm -hmm. That's it. Now I just gotta bolt up the bolts. She's home. What do you think, babe? That's awesome. Thank you. It's only taking me three months to get here. So glad I took the time to sandblast all of these bolts and the axles and just pretty much everything on this truck. It just makes this look so nice going back together and this will spray up really nice. We'll get a little paint on it once we get this all bolted down.
we're just getting a nice little bit of silicone RTV right on this mounting face. So this way we get no leaks. Yes, I sliced the hole inside of this. Axle number two. All right, number two going in. There we go. Beautiful. Right on the money. Okay, and I've left these loosely snug, so this way the silicone can set up, get it on the ground, and then I'll get a final torque on all these bolts, and then we can spray some paint on there, have it looking amazing. Then we can slap our wheels on it, finally. Been hanging out over here waiting patiently, and get this truck on the ground. Once that's done, we can go ahead and hook up our e-brake cable, the cables that we've got going on there, and continue painting and prepping the chassis underneath. Um, fuel tank can go in and start plumbing brake lines and then before you know it riding around all right that's it for tonight we'll catch you guys in the morning what do you say Odie? should we finish up this axle elliot let's do it let's get some paint on this thing and call it done so i just got a final torque on these bolts i held it with a pry bar and then torqued it down now we're good to shoot some paint I'm very glad I got the emergency brake cables done. Now you don't have to take it apart? That's right, baby girl. Beauty. All right, and the driver's side is done too. Now I can put the wheels on this truck and put it on the ground. Finally. Okay, guys, time to get the truck on the ground. And before we do that, we're going to put some gear oil in the rear end because Got to do that. So we'll make sure we get the gear oil in the rear end and then uh, slap those wheels and tires on. I left this nice and loose when I painted it. And we'll go ahead and fill this thing up. And if you've never done this before, it's really simple. All you do is just fill it up until it starts to basically pour out of here. And once it's filled up to that level, it's done. It's level. I've had this sitting in here since summer, going with some Napa 8090. And then I'll add in some stay lube differential friction modifier as well just to make sure everything is meshing nicely even though we didn't change out and replace the ring and pinion it's still the one that was in the truck but we've remeshed and reset the lash on everything so we'll make sure it does good well i'm going to start off with adding in one of the quarts and then i'll add the friction modifier after that because i don't want the friction modifier just going in first and sitting on the bottom and give it a chance to really kind of get incorporated in with everything else so We'll do it like that. Woo! Getting snazzy for you guys. There is a very distinct smell and taste, I was about to say. Not that I recommend tasting it, but yes, very distinct smell and taste of gear oil. Look at that. You know exactly when you're smelling it because it's just very like, potent and like musky and yeah it's just gear oil that takes care of the first one now i'll add in the friction modifier and this stuff is about a little bit smoother than the gear oil it's a little bit more liquidy Okay, that's in there. What do you think, Odie? You're excited this thing's about to be on the ground? Me too, dude. It's about damn time, huh? Yeah, I know. I know. 
Been waiting all summer for this. He's been very patient. Okay, buddy. Okay. All right, our second bottle going in. Gear oil. So we're about almost done with bottle number two, and you can see we're just about reaching the top of full. So I guess I was good with guessing three. We'll just probably need a little bit from the third one. Woody is anxiously waiting for me to finish this. He's like, come on, Dad. Hurry up, let's gear well. Come on. Seriously. Okay, third and final. Get this topped off. Okay, you can see it just about to start coming out, so. Oh, no. I missed it. It's all right. We're full. That's it. Done deal. And for you OCD people out there like me, here is the wipe off of the drip mark. Okay. Tighten this thing down. Okay, the rear end is now full of differential fluid. We already packed our bearings, so now we can finally put these wheels and tires on this truck. Let's go get Alex. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? What do you think? You like it? Looks pretty good, huh, bud? Oh, yeah. Get her, Odie. <laughs> get her. Show her who's boss. My legs are dead from hiking. <laughs> get her, Odie. Oh, wow. I'm tired, Odie. Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Hope you save some energy for the power wagon. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Odie. Chody. Odie Chody. Okay, we might need to play with the height of the truck with the jack. Yeah. So, tell me what you need me to do. Lower. Lower? Yeah. Drop it. Closer. Ooh, get it, babe. Hey, babes. Don't get mad at me if I scratch it. Don't scratch it. I won't get mad at you. Oh. Oh, would you look at that? Teamwork. Perfect jack alignment. Perfect stud alignment. She's a stud of a wife. What can I tell you? Nice, babe. Thanks. <laughs> three Heck months yeah. later three months later and you guys can suck it on who said hey i'm gonna put that on and not paint it hold on odie right, i love where's... how we're both wearing our most vulgar shirts right now too. <laughs> <laughs> where where the lug are nuts are right nuts? behind your head i even cleaned the lug nuts for you who knows you better than me I get to do this too. Yeah, babe, that's the best part. Otis, get out of the way, you camera whore. <laughs> LOL, Graham. LOL. <laughs> Good job, babe. Thanks. Who needs a gym when you got a power wagon? <laughs> me. Uh, All right, do you need me to up. bring her up? Yeah. Okay. Hold that. Tell me when. Keep going. Okay. Is that's it? Mm, yeah. Making me sweat watching this. <laughs> there you go. Scratch it. Nice. Okay, now I need to go high. Okay, hang on. Okay. 
Perfect. They're right on top of the leaf spring. Let me get them for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just where I hit them right out of reach for you. Let's go, gals. <laughs> <laughs> Oh babe. oh babe how's it feel to have the same song repeated over and over i love shania twain bow, 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 wow, wow, wow. Ow. oh do your breath smell like a zoo you smell like poop otis but we love you seriously otis Odie, go away. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. Mass carpet stop. Stop, babe. Now I can finally get my crazy mambo jumbo jack action out from underneath this truck and get those 4x4s out of there and let's put this thing on the ground. It's like a monster truck. It does, huh? Like a one, two, three. Right, it's been three plus months in the making, but the whole back half of this truck is looking brand new. Everything's kind of rebuilt and looks amazing. So let's finally get this thing on the ground and get it off of these sketchy jack situation <laughs> that I put it under. Coming down. Three, two. Four by four is out of there. <laughs> that means this truck is under its own weight on the ground. Looks good. Yeah, it does. It still looks pretty. pretty. <laughs> Why is it so much taller than the? It's probably got to settle this. <laughs> the springs have been unloaded for months now, so it's gonna settle. Finally, on the ground. Let's push this damn thing into the driveway. You ready? No. All right. This jack. It's finally retired of its duties. I can put this thing back in the garage finally. Hell yeah. What are you doing? You goofball. Yeah, it's got no shocks in it yet, silly. So now we got the wild idea of we want to put this thing up front, but it's going to be a little bit of a job pushing it just ourselves because there's no drive shaft connected yet or anything. And Alex said, well, let's just pull it with my motorcycle. So stay tuned for that one. This might not be the best idea, so I think we're gonna can this idea. Oh shit! Great! This car is so lightweight without a drivetrain, it's like nothing. Mama. Get it, babe! Electric. No, we'll never have an electric car in this family. Like it was meant to be. Sorry. 